sure makes sense, especially when the strengths are Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen, the two remaining members of the three-time champions of the early 90s and anticipated centerpieces of Game 1. But even on a night when the big two were less than devastating, the Bulls were, as ever, resourceful. And the morning after headlines included names like Longley, and Harper, and Kukoc. So at times, the stars could lead the cheers, as lesser lights led the Bulls to victory. Seattle had missed a golden opportunity to steal one from the prohibitive favorites. Although, for the most part, the Sonics seemed unfazed by their Game 1 loss. They believe they can play much better than they did in the opener. But here's something for Seattle to consider. So can he. Game 2, next. as we head toward game two of the NBA Finals, and it could be the final home game of the season for the Chicago Bulls. Their plan, and the truth be told, their expectation, is to leave here up to zip, finish the job in Seattle, and return home only for the parade. But the Seattle Sonics still believe they can rain on that parade. Sean Kemp went for 32 in game one before he himself was reined in by fouls. Hi again, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. Game two, just about 10 minutes away, but there's still talk about game one. A nearly classic example of the kind of game a visiting underdog has a good chance to win. Up for grabs, entering the fourth quarter, with the Bulls not fully in sync and Michael Jordan not dominating. If Seattle's realistic hope was to get a split in Chicago and then get out of town, chalk up game one as an opportunity missed. Not only did the Bulls prevail, but with their defense dominating the final period, they blew up in a close game and won by 17 on what for them really was an off night. A night which saw Dennis Rodman get the better of this exchange with Frank Burkowski. If Burkowski's intention was to rile the Rodman, that strategy backfired. As a result of the elbow, Burkowski was hit with a flagrant foul. He gave Rodman a mouthful. Eventually, he continued arguing with both Rodman and Jack Haley, whom Burkowski referred to as Rodman's babysitter. Referee Joey Crawford had heard enough at that point. He gave Burkowski a second technical, thereby tossing the brick. Now you have Dennis Rodman, who laughs at the NBA referees, who laughs at the NBA authorities. That elbow to Frank Bukowski was a flop. Rodman flopped it into a flagrant flop. And then you get two technicals on top of it. I think the call had a big impact on the game. And there's no way it was a flagrant foul. It was a flop. And to have Dennis Rodman, who cheats all over the court all the time, be rewarded for acting and flopping, and then we'll let begin laugh at us, laugh at the league, laugh at the referee, taunt our bench, and not be punished. It's been incredible. Place an all-around ball player and then send him in a, in a dream role and to play a part that I don't think Frank wants to, or needs to play that part, and that's not what's going to disturb Dennis. Dennis is about that, and he's proven in all playoffs. My job is to go in and play defense to keep Dennis off the board. And that's a big job for me. You know, uh, Dennis is a brilliant rebounder. Um, I'm desperate in the, in the sense that I'm here for the first time in my career, and I will do anything to help my team win. If it means knocking Dennis on his butt, that's what I'll do. And Dennis will do the same to me. So the clarity of all that is cool as far as the championship goes. And it, it, I don't have a problem with any of that. Your veteran Frank Rakowski, perhaps just a bit embarrassed by all the attention of the last couple of days. What did Dennis Rodman have to say? Well, here's his quote. We've got to play mind games in this series, and so far, so good. And a live shot of Dennis Rodman, who has elected not to change the dew on the dome from game one. It's a repeat as we move up to tip-off for game two. Marv Albert, Matt Kukas, and Bill Walton, all of whom have remained with their original hairstyle so far as I know, will join us from courtside when we come back to Chicago right after this.
Still some daylight left in Chicago. Game two of the NBA Finals from the United Center. The Seattle Supersonics and the Chicago Bulls tip off just minutes away. For the first time in this postseason, the Seattle Sonics find themselves trailing in a series. With more on the matchup, we go to our announce team of Marv Albert, Matt Kokish, and Bill Walton. Marvelous. All right, thank you, Bob. And uh, looking back at the game number one on Wednesday night, so much for all that concern about the nine-day layoff of the Chicago Bulls because the Bulls did it in every hustle category. Now check this out. When the coaches look at the stat sheet, these are the critical numbers. All Chicago second chance points, which means they control the offensive board. They have the edge in fast break opportunities, and they took advantage of Seattle turnovers, plus they were seeing offense from unexpected sources. Well, Mark, those are telling numbers. And if Chicago gets major contributions from Luke Longley, Ron Harper, and Tony Kukoc, they will be very tough to beat. Right from the start, Luke Longley looking to be aggressive on offense with the jump hook and swatting away one of his four block shots. And for much of game one, Ron Harper neutralized Gary Payton, coming up with a steal and turning it into one of those easy baskets. And Tony Kukoc found his long lost three-pointer and this terrific move inside. The Chicago Bulls have so many different weapons besides the ultimate one. And Bill in game one, George Carl pulled a surprise as he matched Deadlift's trap at the start against Michael Jordan, which did not work. What do the Sonics have to do tonight? For Seattle, they need to get back to basics. In game one, Seattle never gave their real game a chance to see if it would work. Their defensive strategy of putting their worst defensive player, Deadlift Shrimp, on Michael Jordan. Sure, it held him to 28 points, but this is a non contest that Deadlift Shrimp could not get anything done except show the ability to usher Michael Jordan all the way to the basket. Gary Payton, on the other hand, was dwarfed in his matchup by Scotty Pippen. Pippen took him inside, just battered him at will. Gary Payton, he has to have a huge offensive game. That was not the case in game one. Now, the NBA Finals is a very tough place to experiment with gimmicks. But then again, Mark, nothing else has worked against the Bulls this year either. And for more on the Bulls and the Sonics, we have double covers on the sidelines. From Robert Rashad and Hannah Strong, we have reports from both. Let's start with the mob. All right, thanks, Mark. It was a great record-breaking season for the Chicago Bulls. They won all the individual awards. Coach of the year, Michael Jordan, his fourth MVP, Tony Kukoc, sixth player, sixth man of the year. And there was another dramatic presentation made today as the team equipment manager, John Lignanowski, awarded Jack Haley the top team cheerleader of 1996. One other note, that Seattle has uh, the glove in Gary Payton. Well, Ron Harper, because of his play in game one, has now been nicknamed the Mitten. He said he doesn't like the Mitten. If you're going to give him a nickname, call him the Straight Jacket. Now, for more on Seattle, let's go down to Hannah. Thanks, Ron. Well, the Sonic experiment is starting to illustrate on Michael Jordan. has lasted all of one game. They're going to return to their normal defensive rotation for game two. They're going to start working Hawkins on Michael Jordan. They're not going to designate any defender to come over and help on the double team. Instead, the help is going to come from the man closest to the ball. They, however, are going to get no help from their top defender, Nate McMillan. The co-captain was shooting around before the game. Apparently, however, that was just as a decoy. He feels that he re-aggravated his back injury in game one. Doesn't want to risk permanent injury. Told me he'll not only sit out this game, but in all probability the remainder of the final. Mark? Thank you, Hannah. So coming up in just a moment, game two of the NBA Finals from the United Center in Chicago.